Okay guys, so we've gone over why my hat is missing and ultimately why you have to look at my crazy blonde hair. So we've gone over that in the past, but today we are going to be talking about my entire island setup from island survival, whether that's on rivers or whether that's on um, whether that's on lakes, regardless to the island that I'm on, we're going to be discussing the general equipment that I take with me on these trips. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so the primary reason I'm doing this video is a lot like when I went over my survival island knife setup, <clears throat> and that is for views. Just kidding. Not really, but it's because that this equipment is the baseline for what I use, and so to basically break it down so you guys don't have to wonder or ask questions, it'll just you'll just know, you know, what I'm using in general for survival island. So this is the general baseline. Obviously, sometimes I'll bring out like my AK, or sometimes I bring out extraneous gear just for the fun of it, or just for other reasons. So, to first to start off, I use my backpack, and actually, for the most part, this is what it looks like, actually minus generally the saw. Sometimes I bring it, but most of the time, most islands are so desolate that there's really no wood that you can saw down, and honestly, most of the woods drift wood, so you don't really have to saw much wood down, because the bigger pieces of wood that are of a saw size are actually just sitting there already on the beach for you to use. <clears throat> so this is my Camelback Lynch pen. It's been with me for a very long time. Obviously, it's kind of like my multi-purpose, multi-mission kind of setup. But in this, I'm not going to go into this because it gets really boring with all the technical de uh, details, but the specific things that I like to carry in here uh, for islands are a water purification device, whether it's a uh, Gravity Works by Platypus or whether <clears throat> it's some other water filtration device or tablets. I like to have that in here because obviously being around ma mass bodies of water, there's a lot of potential to get drinkable water. So that's the primary thing I like to have in here, and then obviously a sleep system of sorts. Sometimes it's my hammock, but to be honest, I'm actually beginning to phase out my hammock because hammock life has been fun, but there's a few tents that I actually want to try out, so the, the hammock system is kind of getting phased out. However, I like to have a sleep system, and then next to that, I like to have a little bit of fishing gear in here and we're going to actually be visiting fishing more next year, uh, primarily because most of the fishing for uh, non-ice fishing is actually beginning to stop. I mean, obviously you can fish year-round, but it gets a little bit more difficult, so I'm not necessarily going to get a fishing license this year, but start of next year I'm going to get a fishing license and <clears throat> do some more fishing related videos uh, next year. So just the general backpack and kind of the gear I carry there. So on the neck, I like to carry <clears throat> the Mora Eldris. Now once again, the primary emphasis to all my knives is that I need knives that are very rust resistant because when you're on a lake or when you're on a river or even if you're out in the ocean, you're in contact with a lot of water, whether it's fresh or salt water. So I use the Eldris because it's a 1228, or I think it's like 1227C, like 12C27 and Sandvik steel, some type of Sandvik, but um, like I said, it's stainless, it's very rust resistant, and the reason why I've chosen such a small neck knife is because I'm running such a large belt knife that I need something that's more of a companion knife to do more fine, delicate tasks such as uh, gutting a fish or really like filleting a fish, you know, kind of like dressing a fish, and doing some of the more finer crafts. So that's the primary reason why I have a small neck knife. And then of course the good old Exotac Nano Striker because fire is important regardless to where you're at. So then we actually have, I've actually changed this slightly up and I'm going to do an updated video on my, uh, <clears throat> basically my water, water's edge uh, knife system. But we got the Chris Reeves Knives Pacific as the main base blade, and that's due to the fact that the Pacific's a very rust resistant and very sturdy survival blade. It's big, it's thick, it's a hardcore survival blade, and I have really put it through its paces. And the best part is, like I said, it's very rust resistant. Then attached to this setup is a Condor 
man, the name escapes him. It's a Condor pouch, and I got him color coordinating with this multicam. So no more of that like ACU weird looking pouch on this. <clears throat> multicam, multicam. And so I'm actually gonna break into this in a separate video because I don't want to bore you all here. And then to pretty much wrap it up, um, you know, I have a few things in my pockets, but generally uh, I don't really use most of the stuff in my pockets. So next I got the good old Glock 19 or sometimes I carry the Glock 21. Funny enough, in both of my island videos I've done, I was actually carrying the 21, but I like the Glocks because the one thing is in wherever you are when you're on islands, it's a very dirty environment that it tends to get a lot of sand or silt or just fine particle matter into your firearms. So I like very robust, very, I like very robust and very foolproof kind of guns, things that aren't going to jam very easily or things that aren't going to stop working like a 1911 that has tighter tolerances. So I like the Glock for that primary reason that I don't really have to worry about if silk gets in, you know, the slide. It's going to make a nasty kind of gritty sound, but it's not going to be the end of the world. And then of course, just got a couple mags. So, <clears throat> you know, just a couple here of your average Glock 19 mags. So really that's just about it for, um, <coughs> that's really just about it for what I use on an island. Like I said, the, the needs between forested areas and islands are really different because like I said, there's not as much harvesting of wood or felling trees. And there's a lot more of shading yourself from the sun, protecting yourself against the wind and starting fires. Fishing is another huge thing that generally you don't have to worry about as much if you're in a forest. And a forest is more like hunting. So anyways, guys, that's really been, or that's really all I have to say on this. And as always, guys, God bless, and I'm out.